Um, if 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 you're in this episode, you'll probably made through seven uh, episodes of me asking dumb questions or just summarizing the lecture and really struggling with it. I, I'm not sure if you noticed, but Rob, I think he did a much better job at explaining the things that Jeremy asked us to do. Rob, thanks for saying yes to this crazy idea. Yeah, absolutely. It's so. Been fun. totally for me azil but for the audience i'd like to mention if you made through these episodes again to remind you the motivation for us was to create an alternative for you to revise or summarize what was there in the lecture the lectures by jeremy howard i know we keep mentioning jeremy because jeremy becomes your passive mentor quite literally your best friend and you keep hearing his thoughts even mentioned on the podcast that whenever he would listen to jeremy's voice it will trickle his mind into a machine learning state of mind i i can see myself in that situation maybe a little bit already yeah definitely we've been conditioned from watching the lectures so many times i think that's a good way to put it yeah so that that brings me to the outro so this this episode is essentially a way to go from here way to go from watching the seven lectures and things that we thought wouldn't fit better into the seven episodes but should be mentioned as takeaways from things that we've learned uh, i spent i think one and a half year with the fast air material and that's not my experience that how many that speaks to how many stupid mistakes i've done i know rob was much smarter with the material so he'll also have many interesting inputs but maybe i'll i'll let you take the lead on uh, the takeaways or the summaries from from the lectures yeah a lot of this goes back to the advice jeremy gave and Uh, lesson seven about how to spend your time after the course. Uh, one that we didn't mention that's great for the outro is go back and watch the videos again. Uh, you know, you can do the course in one pass, but you will be leaving behind really valuable information. And we're all used to taking like university course. You never go back and just take it again unless you failed it. Uh, but with these types of online courses, sometimes it's the best use of your time to go do a second pass or a third pass. and you'll find that you hear things that you didn't hear the first time around. So really go back and spend time with the videos, let the content sink in. There'll be bits where you now understand stuff where you didn't before. Or you could use this series that's also one of the <laughs> substitutes that we created, but as a reminder, don't just keep watching the lectures, watch them if you're forgetting something that Jeremy had mentioned or if you don't want to listen to this. We hope you do, but focus on the code focus on hacking your way around with the jupiter notebook sense yeah and that's another direct piece of advice from jeremy says what would you recommend doing learning practicing until the part 2 course starts he said just code just code all the time uh look at what goes in and what go- comes out uh how to grab a mini batch uh if you can get to a point where you can rebuild the notebooks from scratch without cheating you will be at an absolute top echelon and it's a really rare thing among practitioners to be able to do that so if you have that level of understanding uh you'll be at the top it's also very comforting to be able to start from a blank notebook and bring something together be it with the api that's very well engineered and very high level be it with fastai or otherwise if you've already explored pytorch or something else if you haven't that might also be a good segue into doing that but remember to stay close to your passion project stay close to your kaggle uh, competition or anything that you're working on and then backtrack to what you need to be able to know to be able to complete that project or idea or whatever yeah yeah definitely staying close to what you're interested in is the only way this is going to be a sustainable thing and you're going to keep going uh when you get lost when things get hard because the reality is after the course you don't have that structure you're now jumping out into an ocean of research papers twitter posts blog posts and sometimes it's hard to know uh what exactly to do next so for that we talked about in another podcast on education if you uh are looking what do i do now that might be a good place to start uh to listen to that uh another one that we haven't talked about much is community um the fast ai forums are an amazing resource and Jeremy suggests you know get out there and get together with others build a network uh learning works a lot better if you have that social experience so starting a book club or a study group or meetups getting together and building things it doesn't have to be anything great make something 
to quote him, uh, build something that will make the world slightly better or will be slightly delightful to your two-year-old to see it. Just finish something and then try to make it a bit better. And another plug he asks for is help from the community. Uh, Fast AI is open source and it's completely maintained by Jeremy, Sylvan, and a league of people just like our listeners who are going in and maybe editing a bit of documentation or fixing a test or even yeah. building uh, something really substantial. So uh, if you want to learn, you're not sure what to do, jump in with Jeremy and Sylvan and just start trying to make fast AI better. I think, and this, this was a very selfish thing in, in retrospect, maybe, maybe not that much, but I didn't know anyone who was doing fast AI in my area. And I decided, let me go out on the internet and invite a bunch of people so that I'm not very lonely while doing this course. And I remember it had more than 100 signups for that meetup series and it was completely online. So that that's also an interesting approach if, if you may, but and in, in retrospect, it has been very rewarding to just be even able to summarize the lectures. That's what we do the, in the meetups or help others with their ideas of like doing mini hacks around the lectures. It's It's been one of my best educations, apart from the podcast, of course. Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, helping others and getting involved. We've talked about that a ton, how helpful that is. Uh, one point we haven't touched on that I find super interesting, we didn't get to the education podcast, is... Uh, just the nature and the environment of being in an online course with thousands of people and that mindset compared to what you get if you work locally, I think it's amazing because in fast AI forums, you're exposed to people uh, like Jason Antic who did Deoldify, uh, people who are working on these amazing world-class projects and it really expands your viewpoint of what you think is possible for yourself and what goals you set. Um, I think it's really important to work locally and to start groups, but I found that when I talk to people from the fast AI community, they dream huge because they've seen all these examples. And Jeremy says, you can do this. This person did it after two years, if you work hard. And when I go locally, I find most people are, I want to do this so I can get this <laughs> job. And it's like very narrow focus. And, you know, I think that's okay. But I think that's one of the biggest blessings I've gotten from the fast AI community is the permission to think big and to just see all these people, you know, we have, there are millions of coders out there doing this. So, you know, if we highlight the top 0.1%, they're doing really world-class things and it makes you feel like anything's possible. Also you, and this, this is a culture that I think Jeremy and Rachel and now also Sylvain have fostered is everyone on the forum treats every other person as a potential best world-class practitioner. What that means is you see these little icons that become very active or even when the course is not active, they are on the forums and they are welcoming and you, you feel very welcomed. You feel really excited because even Aldridge, the tabular expert, Jason Antich, the Deoldify expert is talking to you and goes ahead and says, Hey, that's a great idea. Maybe you should go ahead and do do this. Or that's a great question. Even though you wouldn't have been able to ask that question on, I don't think any other forum online. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think uh, the community is one of the best resources we have. And uh, you were one of the first people I talked to. So I know you're humble. <laughs> and I know you hate having this kind of personal praise and attention. But like, I reached out to you at the very start of the class, and you immediately said, how can I help? What can I do? And just provided so much value to me. So thank you. No problem. I think I think it's it's the culture that even the audience of this podcast, I request you to pass on whenever you see a person on the fast day forum or on any community, please make sure you pass this uh, culture forward, this attitude forward. That's what at least in my life helped me accomplish anything I have in this course. I, I owe everything I've done in my life or at least in my professional career to, to the fast day team, to the fast day community, the fast day family, as I call it. Yeah, same. I think that's a great message to go out on. That's also, I think, a great message to end. But thanks, Rob, again, for joining me all, on all of these. I think it's nine episodes now. Thanks, nine thanks for saying yes. My podcast count has gone up. <laughs> Put that on my resume. <laughs> I hope chai time is, is a good thing. Uh, dropping chai on your resume isn't, though. <laughs> yeah, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, thanks again. <laughs> If you like the show, please subscribe and tune in each week.
टू चाय टाइम डेटा साइंस